Hi everyone, welcome back. So before the calendar year is out, I want to release two Insiders releases through the Patreon campaign. Uh, recently, in a video, we talked about one of them, um, a uh, rough recording of a tune that was written earlier this year, 2014. The other one is going to take us back a little bit. It's a live recording from a uh, North concert that happened back in 2008 of one of our sort of standard longtime uh, favorite tunes. Um, and this, we're going to talk about this today in the first of a series of videos that I call Way Backage. So, North uh, was, as I mentioned in my introductory video, the project that most of the original music I've done for the past 15, 20 years has been uh, part of. And um, it started way back in 1995, and uh, that actually would make a good story for another video sometime. Um, but over the many, many years, it involved lots of friends and collaborators and some really good times, and some of those stories might make good videos too. Um, but the culmination of all of North's activity was the release of our first full-length album called Drowning in Sky, which happened on the 23rd of September, 2008. So the 11 track record uh, was really us pulling out all the stops. We had over 20 people, 20 performers that touched the record that came from four different regions, three recording studios involved from two different states, full scale production and artwork, and even a bonus EP that we put out on the side that had additional tracks and things from the production and some live things as well. So like the record was for our music, the release concert was a culmination of North's time as well. So many friends and supporters all coming together at one time uh, for this great show. We, uh, we had our release concert at the Ark, which is sort of a, a legendary uh, acoustic and uh, sort of folk venue in Ann Arbor. Uh, over 300 people there. It was, it was really just a, a fantastic experience. Um, in addition to North doing our set, we had opening sets from three key album collaborators, as well as a special appearance from a longtime friend and North alumnus, Tom Sharp. So given the significance of this event for us, um, we decided to record the event as best we could in both multi-track audio and multi-camera video. And this recording is where the story of our Insider's release begins. Now, for people who aren't familiar with exactly what those terms mean, uh, let's take a minute to sort of explain that and also explain how that's going to turn into the Insider's release that we're going to get and maybe a whole bunch of other stuff that might come down the road later on, right? So here's a picture of the stage. Here's a picture of our performers, obviously a simplified version of it. But this shows what multi-track audio of a live show really is. In multi-track audio, what that usually means is that every instrument or every microphone is being recorded all at the same time, but the recordings are being separated onto separate tracks. In the old days, it was tracks of tape. Modern days, it means uh, you know separate files on a disk drive or some sort of digital system. So in this example that I've drawn up, you see that there's a microphone hanging over the drum kit. There's a microphone here, um, a vote for uh, vocals for the guitarist and the bassist. And then there's also direct connections to the guitar and the bass. So in this simplified example, we've got five different tracks of instruments. They're all being recorded at the same time, but each instrument is separated from the other instrument. So if you were to listen to just this track, you would hear only what this mic hears, which would be mostly drums. If you were listening to just this track, you would hear only what this microphone hears, which is mostly vocals. If you were listening to just this track, you'd hear only guitar because it's plugged directly into the guitar, right? So the best part about multi-track audio is that when you go to listen to it, you can have complete control over each instrument, how it sounds, how it treats, uh, how you want to put treatments on it, uh, what volume you want to play it at. The disadvantage, of course, is that in, all, in order to get that multi-track audio into a form that people can listen to it commonly on headphones or a stereo system, you've got to take all those separate tracks of audio and you have to mix them together to get a stereo two-track recording at the end. The, uh, most of the records that you hear on the radio, the songs that you hear 
uh, you know, on the internet, on iPods and, and um, professional releases are that they're multi-track audio that has been mixed down into a single two-track mix. And that process is a little bit complicated. It requires uh, some special equipment. It requires a lot of time and uh, definitely a certain degree of skill. Now, on the video side, we had multi-camera video at the show. In this picture, I've kind of simplified it and only show two cameras, but at the show, we actually had three. So what this means is that during the show, we had, in this case, three camera people running around filming things from different angles at different times. Um, each one of those cameras records whatever video it sees, but each camera also has a microphone on board. And that microphone is also recording just the sound in the room. Uh, it's not a microphone that's um, particularly tuned for any type of instrument or, or even for music in particular, but it is picking up the sound in the room. So these microphones are not going to get a sound recording that's going to be as clear or quite as high quality as what you're going to get out of the microphones that are dedicated to the instruments. Uh, it's going to sound very roomy. It's going to sound kind of like a home movie. Um, but if the mix in the room that's being done by the sound man is pretty good at a live show, uh, then the camera audio can be decent. So, each one of these cameras records separate video and each video also has an audio track associated with it. What can then be done is you can then take this video down into editing and in the editing you can switch back and forth between the video from those, in this case, in this example, two cameras, and switch back and forth and show different angles and get something that's very similar to what you might see in television or a movie. Now, in the ideal case, the downside to the multi-camera video side is that you have to get the sound from somewhere else because this camera sound may not be particularly good. So in the ideal case, you not only have to do all the time and work that it takes to edit the video, but you also have to mix the audio, whatever audio you have, and put that into the video production to get a final music video. So what's really nice about the audio and video situation that we had at the concert um, is that we have all the pieces we need to make some really cool videos of the show. Um, we can take this multi-camera video that we have cut it together into these cool kind of, you know, pseudo professional looking uh, tracks of, um, you know, using the different cameras and stuff going on on stage. And then we can lay this nicely mixed multi-track audio for a nice high quality uh, music track to go with it. So the downside to this, as I mentioned, is that this process is time consuming and, and expensive. It's going to be, it's going to be slow and it's going to take some funds. So what I'm hoping to do is use some of the Patreon funds that come in down the road to pick songs to produce this way. And the whole process of you earning votes through the Patreon campaign or bonus votes by uh, you know, subscribing to the YouTube channel and things like that is uh, to help me pick which songs as we go might, uh, might get some of those funds down the road. So these fully produced videos with the mixed multi-track audio might make some great releases when we get some funds for down the road. But what about in the short term? Well, what we're looking at there is the possibility of taking the camera video, which we have, cutting it together, maybe not sweating the details quite as much, but putting together a, a nice little video from it and using the audio that's from the cameras, right? So this audio is not going to sound anywhere near as good as a fully professional mix. But uh, in some cases, it sounds, uh, it sounds okay, and we could get some nice rough videos of songs from the show to capture some of the energy from, uh, from the release. So those are one of the things that we're looking at in the short term for some Insiders releases as we go. Now, as I mentioned in uh, a recent video where I talked about different songs that might make good Insiders releases, uh, we have one song where we kind of already have this done. Um, the folks who did the videography for me, when they delivered me all the footage and the video, they also delivered me a little demo cut. And um, they took one song, the song was Anna's Train, and they cut together video from the three cameras, and they picked the camera that sounded best, and they put the camera audio behind it. Uh, and I have this pretty much ready to go. So uh, this is exactly what we're looking at for our Insider's release 
before the end of the year. So, if you'd like to hear this live cut, uh, it is going to be one of our first two Insiders releases. You can look for them both this month and next on Patreon. Thanks again for listening and see you next week. Wait! I have to remind you of two very important things. The first thing is, please claim your votes. YouTube subscribers, people who've liked the Facebook page, I know there's tons of you out there, but very few of you have claimed your votes, okay? In order to claim your votes, you can check out the video about that, but basically you need to send me a secret name, a special name that we're gonna to use to track your votes from all the different places, right? So, uh, YouTube subscribers, if you're a subscriber, leave me a comment on YouTube with that name, whatever name you pick, for your votes. If you're a Patreon supporter, please leave me a comment on Patreon so that you get credit for your Patreon contributions. If you're signed up on the email list, please go to the website and use the contact page to send me an email from that address that says, this is where I want my votes to go. If you are a Facebook liker, uh, leave me a comment on Facebook or send me a message through Facebook and tell me uh, whatever your secret name is going to be. If you're going to use Iron Man, then you got to send me a comment that says, my bonus votes for Facebook go to Iron Man. This is so important, I think, that... Uh, I'm trying to push people to do it. If, uh, if you get me in, uh, your secret name before the end of November, uh, we'll go with five bonus votes instead of two for each of these things. That means that you can get 15 bonus votes for YouTube, Facebook, and being on the email list without spending a single dime on Patreon, which I'm fine with if that's your thing. So, second thing to remember, please ask me questions, send me comments. Um, is there a particular North song that you've always wanted to know where it came from? Uh, is there a particular gig or show that you were at in the past that you have cool memories about that you'd like to share? Um, is there something about the artistic process or a key influence or a band that I've loved that you'd like to know more about? Uh, North fans or new friends, send me those things. I'm always looking for new ideas uh, for these weekly videos. So those are the two important things. So I uh, appreciate you letting me tell you about that. Okay. Cut to the end bit.